Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Perfectly Mentored. I'm your host, Jason Portnoy. My guest today, Daniel, the guy is called the cold email wizard. Uh, and you'll see why when you listen to this podcast, he's just a genius when it comes to how he's figured out a way to cold email prospects. I mean, the guy has it down to a science. So if you're worried about this is just a spammy approach and I don't want to be able to spam people, the guy's created this whole, uh, you know, mechanism and he's developed his own tech stacks around it on how to do things properly and seamlessly. And he's come up with this system of cold email wizardry uh, to, in order to get prospects to convert to leads, to convert to clients all through email. Check it out. You won't want to miss this one. Daniel, my man, how you doing? Welcome to the show. I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. So let's get some background on your journey. Like, how did you get started? How did you figure out this cold email approach and become the cold email wizard? Okay, so let me just give you the whole background here. So way, way long ago, 2018, I buy a Ty Lopez course, like social media marketing agency. Okay, cool. All right, run Facebook ads for local businesses. Like, and I'm sitting here, okay, how do I get the clients? Well, let me, let me email them because it's free, right? So I'm doing that. And then it's not, I'm not good at it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not good at it at all. And then one day I'm at a bar and one of my friends is there and he's showing me these people on Instagram. He's like, yo, look at these two guys. They're in, they're out here in, a, in like Phoenix or something. They're driving Maseratis and Range Rovers. I'm like, what do these guys do? They're like, oh, they run a social media marketing agency. I'm like, well, what did they do in the marketing agency? They're like, they grow people's Instagrams. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Let me follow these guys. And this is when you could see the activity feed on Instagram. So I'm looking at them and they're following a ton of people all day. So I'm like, Oh, they're doing follow unfollow. Okay. Okay. Right. Now this doesn't work anymore. You can't do this anymore, but it used to. Right. So I'm looking up online, how to do, how to automate follow unfollow on Instagram. And I came across two software apps, follow liker and Jarvi. Jarvi seemed to be the obvious one that did has more features. So I bought a Jarvi course, learned how to use Jarvi. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to do this funnel hacking, right? You, okay. You got these guys at this agency, proven offer, proven audience, like copy it. Right. So I'm like, I'm doing that. But Russell Bronson stuff. Cause I also bought a Russell Bronson course. So I'm going to funnel hack these people. Right. So I'm cold emailing and I get five clients, five free clients. I'm like, I'm going to work with you guys for three months. I worked with these people for free, got them a couple thousand followers. And I'm like, okay, okay. I have case studies now. I have proof. I have results. I can do this. So now I'm, I'm operating this and I'm trying to get clients. I'm cold emailing. I'm just iterating over and over and over again. Garbage cold emails, absolute garbage. The same, the same nonsense you get every day, right? I'm like, okay, I want to increase. I don't like being told off. I hate that. People are like, stop emailing me. Don't ever email me again. It makes you feel dirty. So I'm like, let me, let me put like a compliment and like a PS line or something like that. Increases it a little bit. I'm like, let me, let me individualize the compliments. Let me, let me be like, Hey, I saw that last Instagram you post. I really, I really like that workout you posted. So, Cause my niche was fitness coach. Then I'm like, okay, well it's, what's well, that's at the bottom of the email. They, they, see, they see the preview text. They might just trash it. Right. So let me, let me, let me just put it the first line of the email, like individual, individually personalized compliment. Astronomical increase in replies, like to, to such a massive degree. I'm like, Oh, this is how you do it, right? So I'm about 21 years old at this point and I'm doing this and then Instagram algorithms start changing, right? And then essentially follow unfollow is destroyed. You can't do that anymore. So I'm like, okay, I was 21 years old. I was making $10,000 a month, fresh out of college. And now I'm like, oh, this is not good. I don't have money now. So I'm like, all right, I just got all these clients with cold email I have nothing else to do now. Let me just go do cold email for other people. So I start doing that. And then now the issue becomes, okay, well, I, I'm working with this agency and they sell to dentists. We're, we're going to, with this agency and they sell to real estate agents. And I'm going through all these niches over and over and over and over again. Every niche imaginable, right? And you start to figure out what niches work with cold email. And the general gist of it, is that if the niche is on their email inbox, it works, right? So if you're, if you're emailing contractors, it's not gonna work because they don't check their email, right? Real estate agents, always on their email, it'll work. Although I, I will say a lot of real estate agents are poor. It's like the top 5% that make all of the money. Yeah. So 
and experimenting with this, it's it, it's come down to the point now where it's like I only do it with an agency that sells to e-commerce or coaches and consultants because it's it's just much easier. So let's say let's say you're trying to get like four percent of your emails with a meeting, right? You're only going to get that high of a number if it's a niche like e-commerce or coaches or something like that. It, it's just ends up being so much less effort when it's those niches. So I just exclusively work with those niches now, right? So general gist, I run a business that sends cold emails for other people. I get them sales calls. That's it. Love it. But now before we even dive deep into cold email, I got to ask you this question because the make a course market has got a lot of negative connotation, right? It's, it's, it's the sleazy of, of, of it all in, in the digital marketing world. Why did you decide to launch a course showing other people how to do what you do? Okay. I love this question. Right. And people, people always try to sugarcoat it. It's like, Oh, I wanted to help people. It's like, no, I made a course because people buy courses, right? Offer, right? Cause I get on sales calls with people and say that they, they're not too big of an agency. They're like, Hey, like I, I can't afford $3,000 a month, but like, I'd love to see if like, if you made a course, I would totally buy the course hearing that over and over and over again. I'm like, why don't I just make a course? Right. So I made the course course ends up really good. I, I, I was not very confident in the beginning of my ability. I'm like, Oh, what if people think it's a garbage course? Ends up people love the course, right? Because the, the, if you just follow it exactly, it works. Right. And it's only for a very particular person. So like people will try to sell like a lifestyle course on my sales page for my course. I say, if you do not sell B2B services, do not buy this course. So I'm trying to disqualify. And it, if someone's ever like, hey, man, this, this actually didn't apply to my business. Like I actually sell to like contractors or something like that. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, here's a refund. I think people get negative connotations with courses. It's, it's always going to end up being like they don't have good customer service. I spend probably three and a half, four hours a day just messaging people on Twitter trying to make sure they actually get results. Love it. So, so now, now that we got that out of the way, because I, I just wanted to see, I want the, the listeners to see, cause I know you and I know you're a straight shooter. You're like me. So I, I, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to, to shoot it straight for a second there and, and give you the opportunity to, to go off on that. So let's talk about cold email. Um, who does it? I, I mean, you kind of touched on it, but who does it work for and who does it not work for? Okay. It works for people who are selling something that is, $2,000 plus per month. And you made a tweet the other day and I really liked it. And it said, a lot of people don't have a traffic problem. They have an offer that doesn't convert problem, which is so true. Because if I'm on, if I'm on a sales call with someone and they're like, Hey, I sell, I sell a, a $3,000 per month thing to e-commerce stores. And I'm like, well, how many clients do you have? They're like, Oh, I have two. I'm like, well, how'd you get those clients? Oh, well, I knew some person. And then and then they referred me off to someone and it turns out the results aren't even that good. And it's like, okay, so although you have clients, you actually don't have a replicable sales system. So your offer isn't actually proven. It's just that you, you, you just so happen to have these clients, you stumbled upon them, right? You don't have any concrete concrete selling proposition, right? Oh, we do, we do SEO and this and this and this and this. That's another point too. If you, you can't sell everything in the quality, one offer, one niche, people will be like, Oh, I, I do SEO and websites and Facebook ads for any business who needs marketing. Like, Oh yeah. Good luck. But you're going to email everyone. Like that yeah. doesn't work whatsoever at all. So you need one niche because you need to scrape a certain niche, right? One offer, you do email marketing, right? To, to e-commerce stores that use Clavio. $3,000 a month offer has to be proven. Like it, you have to, it has to already work. Right? It's the same as any mechanism. And there's, cold email is good for your first like five clients. So you want to get cash or something like that, right? If you're like at five, you're trying to get to like, maybe like 20, go, go do Facebook ads. Like, sir, it's going to be less effort. You're going to have a lot of calls on Facebook ads, but then just hire a closer. Like, obviously it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the same mechanism. Like you're going to need someone on the calls anyway. And it's just ends up being easier. It's a lot of work. It's cold emails. You want to get your first couple 
right? Maybe you're below like eight, you have less than eight clients, or you're selling something extremely expensive to a very particular kind of person, like, oh, CEOs at manufacturing firms doing 50 billion plus a year, right? You're not going to get them with ads. You're just not. That's when you would use cold email. So how is what you teach um, different from, let's say, the annoying LinkedIn messages or the annoying spam or the annoying like emails of, Hey, love your stuff. Uh, would love to work with you and jump on a call. How, how is what you teach different? Yeah. So you need to manually individualize every single cold email. You need to actually research the person. Oh, so you mean, you mean this isn't a hack, right? People have to do work. Yeah. You have to do oh, work. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to make sure that that uh, I wanted to put the disclaimer that works involved in, in, yes. in building a business. Good. Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. A hundred percent. And now I know what everyone's thinking. Oh, I have to manually do this. Listen, the incremental increase in conversions is going to drastically outweigh the incremental increase in work by a massive margin. Like if you're blasting cold emails to absolutely everyone, you're going to send like 3000 and maybe get one client. If you just sit there and manually write each cold email and actually research these people, you're going to get like 15% of people to respond to you. And it works even better on LinkedIn. So like in the connection note, like, Hey, first name. And then like, I just read your article that you posted on LinkedIn or on your website. I loved what you said about this, right? Hyper specific to the point where it's so absolutely obvious that you researched the person. Extremely obvious that it was manually written. Right. And now there's, you can, you can upload it where it's like, Hey, name compliment. And then you use like, you write the compliment in a Google sheet and then you just insert the merge field. Hey, name compliment. Right. And then send what would otherwise be like your email copy. Yeah which is in all instances, like just talk about the results you've actually gotten for someone else, right. To show that you are the real deal and you can actually deliver. So, I mean, so yeah, let's talk about that. So the first step is, is research, right? Right. Write something targeted towards them because people like hearing about them and doesn't feel like spam. What's the next part? Okay. Like, and how long, like, cause I get pitches all the time and they're like 400 paragraphs. And I'm like, you think I'm reading 400 paragraphs? You think I'm reading this essay? Yeah, yeah. So the longer your cold email, the less the probability that somebody's gonna read it in entirety. So you have to make it extremely short, like less than seven sentences or six sentences. So that means you have to be absolutely direct and concise. Hey name, compliment. My name's Jason and I just helped, uh, I just helped uh, an apparel brand just like yours go from 45,000 a month to 275,000 dollars a month um, by managing their Facebook ads or I don't know maybe you do email or something like that. I'd love to see if we can do something similar for you. Do you have time for a quick call this or next week? right? So my question, my next question to you is how many people can't relay or can't communicate properly what they do that you come across? A very massive margin of people. They can't, that people have this tendency to just write and write and write and write so much fluff in every single instance. If someone comes to me and says, Hey bro, my cold emails aren't working. I'm like, okay, send me your cold email. There, there's just so much nonsense in it. And they're using nonsense words too. It's like with our unique and, and optimized <laughs> Facebook ad strategy, like bro, shut up, like yeah. calm down. Like just say what, okay. Use Facebook ads. Okay. How much money did you make them? right? Quantifiable result. That's the only thing people care about. What did, what did the client receive that your prospect could also receive? And, and I think you touched on it, but I, I want to reiterate because it's super important and in an industry exactly like yours, yes. right? Because you're selling apparel, very different than jewelry. You're not going to tell a jewelry company that you just helped some apparel company go from like 1 million to 5 million. That doesn't help them, right? So, so to be very specific in, and this is what you teach, be specific in that you've actually helped people like them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now people think like, oh, well, there aren't, there aren't that many apparel stores. Like maybe, maybe there's like a, maybe there's like 2000 in the United States. Well, if you individually write cold emails with compliment, 2000 people, you're probably going to get like 
You couldn't even ha- you couldn't even <laughs> handle that. So even if they came, to, even if all two thousand came to you, you wouldn't be able to fulfill that. So yeah, it's like it's like, dude, like if you took legitimately, if you took an omni-channel approach, if you were like cold email, LinkedIn, cold email, LinkedIn, like back and forth, like it's going to be extremely difficult to not get like five percent of those people on the phone, and that's the low end. Like if you have really good results, it's going to be very very difficult. And now here's the problem: a lot of people come to as well. They they're sitting here and they're like, okay, okay. I know how to get clients now. And they're like, I'm going to get a lot. And then they like, can't actually fulfill the service on the back end. It's like, right, let me give an example. So this, this writing the compliments thing, right? I have this like private group as well. In addition to my course. And this guy came up and he's like, Hey man, I can, I can write the compliments for your students. So I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'll put you in here. I won't charge you. Cause like they need the compliments we're in. Right. So he starts off really good. First couple of people he's got, he's writing really good lines, right? And then as he gets more and more business, the, the, the quality gradually degrades. And now today I had to remove him because he sucks, right? <laughs> so it's like, and then I had, I was actually on another call today too. And someone was like, bro, I'm running a cold email business like you. And I just signed eight clients and I can't get them results. I'm like, okay, you just, you just scaled to eight people in a month and you don't even have, any experience you need to be able to fulfill on the back end you can't scale that fast it's a miserable idea you really shouldn't do that you know what i like about you and 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 i said it is that you're straight to the point no fluff no bullshit and and if you you know you and i on twitter we have the banter and 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 it's the same thing i i say it how it is and it probably costs me more business than actually brings in business because i'm just so brutally honest (laughs) it's refreshing in our industry. Like, let's talk about that for a second. I want to, we'll get back to email in a second, but our industry is so filled with like fluff or, or, you know, like uh, uh, kumbaya with all the people in the market telling you what you, what you, uh, what you want to hear. Right. I I think that's a very important distinction between what you want to hear and what you need to hear. Do you think that's been uh, an integral part to your success? is because you shoot straight and you sit there and tell them what they need to hear versus what they want to hear? The number one thing people tell me is like, they'll get my course and there's like an intro video where I'm like, like essentially telling them to stop being a pussy. (laughs) Right. Um, And they're like, bro, you got me so pumped up. And it's like, I guess people are very used to like buying a course and it's, it's, it's telling them what they want to hear and not what they need to hear. And I think that it it must be why, because people seem to love me on Twitter and I grow very fast. I grow like 150 followers a day. And it's like, I'll, I'll say shit. That's like extremely outlandish and, and direct. And a lot of people will disagree with that. I'd be like, no, like, shut up. I remember I saw this one time. I I watch you. I watch you do it. And I know when you put out that tweet, I know exactly what's going on in your mind. And I know exactly what the point of that tweet was. So (laughs) so, it's so funny. And then I watch the comments go on it. And I'm like, I'm like, mission accomplished. (laughs) Yeah. I I remember someone put, they were like, I don't know who it was. They were like, um, I I transitioned from agency to coaching because it's more fulfilling. And I was like, Oh, well I did it because you can make more money. (laughs) And then I tweeted that. I was like, I was like, why do you, I was like, why do you sell a course? I'm like, because people buy courses. Like that's, that's why I did it. Right. And now I have, it's like, Oh, why'd you make software apps? I'm like, because I can sell it to the people who bought my course. Like it's, that's literally why I did it. People beat around the bush. And if someone DMS me, they're like, Hey bro, Oh, I sell, I sell this to, to contractors where you, of course, work for me. I'll be like, no, like a lot of people be like, Oh yeah, man, try it. It'll work out. Like, no, like if you, if, if you were on a sales call with me, you're like, Hey, can you work? I would say no, which it's not going to work if you did it yourself. Cause I wouldn't do it. Yep. So I'll just say that straight up. And I feel like I would, I would rather forego the revenue and have the goodwill because people know that now. And maybe one day, They'll come across me again, like, oh, I'm selling this now. Yeah, I remember that one guy. He was very straight and direct with me. I could probably trust what he says. And I'll say the hard things to them. And people will, I think people appreciate that much more. And maybe you lose out on a lot of front end revenue, but I'm imagining it's going to make up for itself on the back end. Yeah, it's happened a couple of times with the agency where they, I, I told them their expectations are out of whack. This is what you could expect. And like, no, that's not what other agencies told me. I'm like, with all due respect, go to the other agency. Have fun. Like, we, we can't give you that. Mm-hmm. And they get burnt by the agency. 
And then they come back and they sit there and say, well, you told us about all this. I'm like, yeah. And they're like, well, it's crazy. How come the other agency didn't tell us about this? I'm like, I don't like headaches, right? If, if, it, if I promise you something that I can't do, you're just going to call me every single day and bother me that this isn't working. I don't, I don't, I don't want the headache. It's not worth it to me. And I, I feel you're the same way, but you, you, you transition perfectly into my next question. When you started talking about the technology behind it all, how does it all work? What's the process? Let's get tactical for a second. What's the strategy, the tools needed, and I guess the back end tech. Okay. So when you go through my course, a lot of it is scraping. It's like, okay, well, you need to, you, you need to actually gather the email addresses of the kinds of prospects you're sending to. Sending to. So let's take e-commerce first. So originally what you would have to do is use this tool called built with and built with would be like, okay, uh, find me, find me stores with Shopify installed. And then like stores that those Shopify stores with Clavio. And then you would have to take those domains and like plug them into, into like clean leads or something like that to get the direct contact information, right. From the domains. Right. So I was like, okay, okay. Let me make my own SaaS That's cheaper than that. Right. And keep in mind, I do not know how to code at all. I, I cannot code anything. And I own two software companies. <laughs> right. So I, I just found, I found a partner who knows how to code. We should probably, we should talk about partners in a second. I have a, I, I have a theory on that. Um, so solve that issue. It used to be like, you have to get all the domains and plug them like a thousand at a time back and forth, back and forth. And like kind of go in and remove duplicates and like manually go in and try to see like, okay, was this, it was this actually right? Does the LinkedIn profile match up like back and forth, back and forth. I was like, okay, let me just do this all make our own tech for it. And then just straight up sell it. Like bam, unlock this email address, like Uplead. Have you ever used Uplead or like zoom info? Yep. All right. Yeah. So you, you, you find a person, but unlock the email, bam. That's exactly what mine's like. It's like, okay, uh, I want Shopify stores with Clavio installed, select all these, bam, put them in your leads immediately unlocks the LinkedIn profiles and the direct email address. And they're already verified. You don't have to clean them in like Vala Norway or something like that. Okay. Bam. E-commerce done. All right. Second one, scraping LinkedIn. Normally it comes out to like, let's say you want to get I don't know, coaches, consultants on, on, on LinkedIn or real estate coaches. You can put like a quote inside the LinkedIn search, like real estate coach. It's going to spit out profiles with that exact string inside of their bio. If it's not e-commerce, you can probably find it on LinkedIn. So there was this other app I was using and I was a fill. I was an affiliate for the app. So four months go by and I haven't been paid a single affiliate commission. And then I got on a call with him one time just like, cause I wanted to buy the company. I was like, Hey, I, I want you to own this. And he was like, no, man, I don't want to sell and everything else. Like, all right, but pay me my affiliate commission, please. He's like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'll pay it right now. I just paid it. I was like, all right. So like the next day I go and I look and I'm like, oh, there's still an outstanding balance of $5,000. Like it should have been, it should have, it's recurring too. It was like, I was getting 20% recurring. Like I'm just not receiving this income. So I hit up one of my other friends, uh, Matthew Pike on Twitter. You know who he is? Uh, sounds familiar. Okay. Yeah. He's he, yeah. So I hit up, he's a developer. So I hit him up. I was like, yo, let's make our own. Let's, let's just, let's just copy the exact functions of this. And he has a course. I have a course. So I'm like, let's just sell it because I want to own that traffic. It's like, I'm, I'm referring you to, to this app and you're not paying me. So it's like, I might as well just keep it myself. So we made our own and then it's been like four weeks now and we're at 12,800 monthly recurring revenue. So it's like, and now I'm thinking to myself, cause I was only getting 5,000 recurring from the first one. I'm like, why did, were people just not clicking my affiliate link? And that appears to be the case. It must've been like 30% or less were actually clicking my link. Cause they would just go through, watch the video of the tutorial on it in my course. And then they just go without clicking my link. So now I'm capturing more of that. And that see like this SAS thing, it seems to have been the absolute correct decision moving forward because you can't sell a course business. I can't be like, Hey, I'm going to sell you this entity. I literally can't. No one would buy it. Yep. 
So the only way it can create a sellable entity is if I have these SaaS apps. Okay, so so clean leads is basically that's that's the other one that the the one from not being a paid the affiliate. I made clean leads, right? That's for scraping LinkedIn. And now yeah. I, I what's that? I'm listening to you. Okay. Now there's two other ones. You when you when you start sending cold emails, you have to warm up your email address. You need to like send the emails back and forth. People need to open the emails and, and click them and whatnot. And I use a software called Lemlist for that. Lemlist has a product called Lemwarm. And it's like it automatically sends emails back and forth between their, excuse me, customer base, opens the emails, unmarks it as spam if it comes in spam, right? It's also a sending tool, but I like Mailshake better. Mailshake is a sending tool and it'll, it'll connect with like, there's direct integrations with like Pipedrive and HubSpot and Zapier and you could do all this stuff. It's like a lead catcher. It can show your leads. So now I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, well, I don't have an affiliate for Lemless. I don't have an affiliate for Mailshake. Guess what time it is to make my own. I <laughs> so love, I'm it. Doing I love it. Vertical integration. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, I mean, Okay, so now you updated your course, obviously, to have your software in there versus yeah. sending them elsewhere. Okay, so how much is the investment in tools and software in order to be able to do this properly? What okay, are people so looking at in terms of an investment? Yeah, so let's let's in turn of all the software, like if you excluded my course, yeah. currently at this moment, my course one hundred fifteen dollars. It's not very expensive. Software, just for software. Like, let's say you're sending to e-commerce. Okay, you need to get G Suite with the domain. So twelve dollars plus six, $18. Um, you need to get Lemless, $29. Mailshake, $59. Um, and you're going to need contact decom, $145, right? So what's that coming to now? Uh, I, I don't know, like 200, 200 bucks. And now writing the compliments for people, right? You Okay, you scrape your leads and I get it right. And, and you have clean leads. Yeah, clean, you don't need clean leads if you're selling to e-commerce though. Okay. Yeah, like if you're just the e-commerce agency, like, yeah, you would only need contact e -com. And how much is Clean Leads, just so you could plug it? Clean Leads is 97 a month. There you go. Yeah. Um, and now you need to write the compliments. All right, so you can do it yourself, but what's 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 your rate? What's your time worth? Are you going to sit there doing a $7 an hour task? Like, no, you probably don't want to do that. So this one guy, what he did was he recorded himself. He's a friend of mine. He recorded himself writing them for 12 hours. Because you can hire someone to write them for you, but then like on Upwork you can get a freelancer, but they're, some of them are just dumb. They don't, they, don't to, they don't know how to do this. And then you have to sit here and train them. Like, okay, so now you're doing that. So we made this of him doing it for 12 hours. So essentially you can literally just give it to the freelancer. Like, here you go. Like, watch that. Bam, fully trained freelancer. freelancer. They can write all the compliments for you. So smart. So how do we get around the, like the laws of like not adding people to mailing lists without the permission? What's the loophole here? Yeah. So there's, I don't know if G GDPR will apply to the United States, but it's, it's something that says if you have legitimate interest, you are allowed to do it. So if you're mass blasting on like a drip campaign of people who didn't sign up, yeah, that's a no go. But if you manually look these people up, like, hey, I, I like I know you're an e-commerce store and you're using Clavio and I, I looked at your site and I saw this and like, oh, I read your article, like legitimate interest to individually identify this person. Like, yeah, you can you can email them. I don't think there's a law in the United States that bans that. In Canada, I believe there is, but then it's like just don't email Canadian companies. <laughs> I'm in Canada, so just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, I don't even know if there is. <laughs> I mean, go go to your inbox right now. You have like 35, 35 cold emails right now. Hundred percent. Yeah, you got like ten today. And look, if you're being nice and you and like, there's is, I think the law is around spam. I'm not a lawyer. You're not a lawyer. So like, if you're listening to this, go check your lawyer. But I mean, imagine you got sued for every time you want to send an email to someone, right? Like, and you were just saying, hey. Daniel, what's up? I'm Jason, big fan of your course. And then started to pitch you and be like, no, man, I'm going to sue you. <laughs> How dare you email me? Yeah. <laughs> so again, if you do it right and not spam me, it's not really going to make a difference anyway. So we talked about the body of the email and what goes into it. How important is that subject line? Okay. 
the things that are going to determine your open rate are deliverability and subject line and the preview text, right? So deliverability, you need Google Workspace. It used to be called G Suite. It's called Google Workspace now. Buy domain on Google domains, like check the box to get Google Workspace. That's going to give you two things, SPF and DKIM. Now you need to insert another record as well in your DNS. It's called DMARC. Put that in. Okay, you're good. Now you need to warm the email address up for like two weeks. Two weeks, you're not sending anything. You're just email, you, put, you leave it on a limb warm, right? And then when you start sending cold emails, do not exceed 15 per day. People are like, oh, only 15. Like, yeah, if you're if you're actually writing good compliments or manually, like you're, you should be getting a 15% reply rate. That's what I see consistently. So 15 a day it starts to add up pretty quickly. So the next week you do 20, the next week you do 25, next week you do 30, next week 35. You need to take it slow. People love to absolutely ram it out and then they burn their domain. And it's like, okay, good job. Now you have to start all over again. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Just let it, so, let it ride. So what's a good subject line? Okay. Just put a merge field in it. So quick question about company, question for name, your name plus their name, their company plus your company, but just some merge field. You can leave it blank. I mean, and every niche is different. So like maybe, maybe, maybe an e-commerce store with at a, at a certain revenue level will respond to something different. Like a, a, a dentist would be different. Like a real estate agent would be different. A coach would be different. So it's just some combination of a merge field, right? Question for name, just anything. Hey, name, question. Like some identifying factor inside there. So you also talked about like getting people's names. And when you're going after the bigger companies, what other job titles should you be looking for that work really well versus owners and founders? Okay. Owner, founder, CEO, chief marketing officer, director of marketing. And then like vice president, some people just put vice president. Some people just put president. I go to those as well. Um, just some people just put manager, but you always want to go in descending order. But I will put a caveat on that. If like the company's doing 50 million a year, you don't want to send to the CEO. Like he's not responding to you. But here's, here's another thing. If you're selling to a $50 million a year company, the probability of you selling something that's like $25,000 a month is pretty high, right? So you're going to want to email, okay, let me email the CEO this week. I'm going to email the CMO next week. I'm going to email, I'm going to, I'm going to email one of the vice presidents next week. I'm going to email the next vice president next week. And you just go down the line, right? People love, people love this concept of absolutely massive volume. It's like, dude, if you're selling something that's $25,000, put some time into getting a higher conversion rate than more traffic. There's only so many people on earth that can afford what you have. So it's like, make a Google sheet, got a hundred different companies. Okay, contact one at this company, contact two at this company, contact three at this company. Okay, highlight them in red if they didn't respond to you. Next week, you're gonna go to this guy. Next week, you're gonna go to this guy. Oh, this one didn't respond to me, right? Well, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, right? People don't wanna put in the work. They, they're hoping that, there's a tool that they could just put out there, blast everyone, and thousands of people will come back to them and say, here's $25,000 a month. Come work with me. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I mean, the next thing that comes to my mind when it comes to this is, you know, I, I feel like this is very different than when it's your targeted newsletter or you're writing, you know, an email versus having a separate email for cold email, which is what you spoke about. But when it comes to email, people love to throw images of themselves in it, links and all kinds of that stuff. Um, but something you talk about is not to do that in the first email. Why not? If you put a link in your first cold email, the probability of it bouncing is extremely high. Don't, I don't put links ever. I don't, I know a lot of people like to use the HubSpot signature too, which is a bunch of HTML coding and an image. You're, it's going to bounce. Like it's got, it's, you're going to spam. I promise you're going to spam. And then Lemlist does this thing where it's like, oh, we can put personalized videos and yeah, good luck getting that delivered. Like that's not, it's just not happening. Like you're not getting that in the inbox. So you might as well just put text and actually get it in there and manually ask them to reply like, hey, do you have time for a call this week? When doing this, what do you see as the three major mistakes people make? Okay, here are the mistakes. 60% of this equation of getting a response is how well the compliment is written. 
like how actually researched the compliment is. Now, a lot of people are like, I can't, I can't, I can't write a good compliment. And and don't be creepy in the compliment. Like guys, don't be like writing to a woman and be like, you know, you look beautiful in your profile picture, <laughs> right? Because there are creepy people. And I, I want to preface that. Yeah. Yeah. I put like a whole bunch of examples in, in, in my course. Um, you're not writing a good enough compliment. Like if we were to grade it on a scale of like one to 10, like if you put like a five out of 10 compliment, it's like, all right, you're going to get very standard results. But if you like bump it up to eight out of 10 compliment, like it's going to like triple. Like, oh, I'm not kidding. That's such a determining factor of how it's so important. People just don't understand how important that actually is. Second, if the person, if the niche actually wants what you have, right? Is it a proven offer? Like a lot of people, they'll make it agency. They're like, oh, I'm going to sell I'm going to sell websites to plumbers and they've like never spoken to a plumber in their <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. Do plumbers want websites? Probably not. They're probably making like 200 K a year without a site. They don't yeah. care. So next one is going to be, they, they don't, they don't test enough stuff. Like the exact syntax of the words you say inside of the body copy needs to be tested. Someone will be like, Hey man, I sent, I sent, 70 cold emails and I haven't got a call yet. I'm like, well, what, what'd you change? She's like, Oh, I just sent the same subject line to the same, same body. I'm like, Oh well, yeah, well, no shit. It's the same thing as like Facebook ads, right? You yep. need to make a lot of ads. You need to make a, you need to make a lot of iterations of what you're testing. People just don't want to do the work. It always comes down to that. Oh, I, I just copied exactly what you said in your course. And it did it. But yeah, because, because the copy you copied was selling like, ads to med spas and you're selling to e-commerce stores. Like, obviously it's different. Like, yeah. dude, come on, put some effort in here. Like, help me out. So I'll end with this. Cause I think this is a very important question. You just delivered everything pretty much on, on, on this, on this podcast. Um, you know, on bodies with chase, you and chase did an excellent video together where you actually walked people through how to do everything. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, if they follow you, which I'll, I'll link up in, in, in the show notes, you give away everything there too. Mm -hmm. um, so how, like, why do you think people just don't execute? Like, right, you're giving everything away. They don't even need to buy your course theoretically because like if, if they go through your Twitter thread, they watch you with on that video with Chase, they watch this. They don't even need to buy the course because we just gave them the course. Mm -hmm. They won't execute. They'll buy the course. They won't execute. What do you, what do you think that, that comes down to? You know, it's shiny object syndrome. That's literally what it is. So I was, I was talking to this guy and he was like, yeah, bro, I've been, I've been, I've been a, a copywriter for a year and a half. And then I came across your course and I was like, Oh, let me, let me try to make a cold email business. And now I'm running this cold email business. And I'm like, dude, why did you do that? It's like you have a year and a half experience of being a copywriter and you just decided to switch business models. So like they'll, they'll buy my course and they'll be like, Oh yeah, this is cool. I'm going to go buy a Facebook ads course next or, Oh, oh I'm going to do, I'm going to go buy a LinkedIn course next. And, it, and they just, they, it, 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 everyone has ADHD. They can't just sit down and do a singular thing at all. Listen, the, the worst thing I ever did to myself ever was switching business models back and forth. Right. I may, you will make the most money when you stick with a singular thing for an extremely long period of time. And that's not very fun. You get extremely bored and you really want to do something else. Stop. Just do one thing, right? One offer, one niche, one traffic mechanism for an extremely long period of time, like two years, three years. Just bang that out. Don't do anything else. And magically you get rich. Love it. Uh, again, it's just so funny because I'm a big believer in giving everything away for free. I don't think there's a secret sauce out there. Uh, I just think, you know, if the, if the one out of every 1 million people actually take you up on it and, and, and say, okay, I don't need this course. I just got it for free. That's great. They become great testimonials for you mm -hmm. and plug you. And the rest are going to end up buying your stuff anyways, because they're just too lazy to figure out themselves. 
Daniel, for the people who want to reach out to you, for the people who are sat there and said, you know, this all is good, but like, eh, maybe I want to buy his course. And I think you all should. I actually own your course. Um, uh, for the people who want to buy your course, how can they reach out to you? How can they find you? And if they want to work with you? Yeah. On Twitter, Black Hat Wizard. The name is actually Cody Mel Wizard, but the at is Black Hat Wizard with two Ds. Send me a DM. I respond to like 95% of DMs unless it's, hi, sir, how do I make money? <laughs> And uh, yeah, uh, go into the Twitter search bar and do at Black Hat Wizard and then in quotes thread and you will have all of my threads. Go read all of them. And then um, I have this pinned to my profile now. It's, it's how to scrape everything, how to scrape every single niche. So if you want to go read that thread, that's, that's my most liked thread. So best one. Love it. And, uh, and to all the people who want to make a Twitter handle with the name Wizard in it, what's your final thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, everyone on Twitter is making... Whiz of Fiverr, whiz of, whiz of this, whiz of that. It's like, come on, be original. I told you, man, I'm the sorcerer of marketing. That's it. <laughs> Daniel, thank you so much for doing this. Really appreciate you. Thanks, man.